Tiny sea creatures reveal ancient origins of neurons. New research suggests that some of the simplest invertebrate animals, present on the planet for about 800 million years, have cells from which modern neurons may have evolved. Research published in the journal Cell sheds new light on the evolution of neurons. Scientists have determined that specialized cells found in plantains, tiny sea creatures, could have given rise to neurons in more complex organisms. Flatworms, Placozoa, are one of the simplest invertebrates, about the size of a grain of sand. They feed on algae and microorganisms found in shallow, warm seas. These flattened-bodied creatures live without any body parts or internal organs. Their bodies are characterized by a lack of symmetry and a clear front-to-back definition. They probably appeared on Earth about 800 million years ago, and their DNA content in the nucleus is the lowest of any known animal. Scientists from Spain and Germany identified specialized secretory cells in these organisms from which neurons could have evolved. The first neurons are thought to have appeared about 650 million years ago. Eurypterides coordinate their behavior through peptidergic cells, special types of cells that secrete peptides. These, in turn, can direct the animal's movement or feeding. Scientists were intrigued by these cells and decided to check their origin. They used a number of molecular techniques and computational models to do this. All this to understand the evolution of peptidergic cells. First, they mapped all the flat cell types, describing their characteristics. Each cell type has a specialized role resulting from specific sets of genes. This allowed researchers to chart the clusters of these genes. They then created a map of the DNA regulatory regions that control these genes, revealing a clear picture of what each cell does and how they interact with each other. Finally, they performed cross-species comparisons to reconstruct the evolution of cell types. A total of 14 different types of peptidergic cells have been identified in flatworms. Analyzing them, scientists noticed that some of them were, in some respects, strikingly similar to those that make up our brains. So much so that they even resemble a primitive form of nerve cells. One could say here that they constitute, in a sense, a specific evolutionary stage for neurons. Cross-species analyzers have shown that these similarities are specific only to planarians and do not appear in other animals. We were amazed by the similarities. Peptidergic cells of planarians have many similarities to primitive neuronal cells. It's like looking at the path of evolution, said Sebastian Nile from the Center for Genomic Regulation in Barcelona. The way they function in relation to flat cells resembles the behavior of neurons. To put it simply, they control how the body of these small organisms works by releasing peptide signals in a similar way to neurons. Peptidergic cells of planarians are formed in developmental processes similar to neurogenesis, i.e. the process of creating new neurons in humans. Moreover, the analyzers showed that these cells possess the genetic machinery necessary to build the part of the neuron that can send a signal. However, these cells are far from being true neurons. This is where the difference in advancement level becomes apparent. Well, the mentioned peptidergic cells lack elements that receive neuronal messages or those required to conduct electrical signals. Interestingly, Peptide secreting cells have survived for millions of years in flatworms, but are absent in other early animals, such as sponges and finfish. This may indicate that they evolved before other neuron-like cells.
the periphery of a black hole's accretion disk has been observed for the first time. Astronomers have made observations of the outer regions of the accretion disk of an active supermassive black hole for the first time in history. These observations could help scientists better measure these structures and understand how black holes absorb material from the disk and how this affects the evolution of galaxies. Investigating the properties of black holes is not a simple matter. An analysis of the properties of their accretion disks, i.e. rotating gas and dust falling and absorbed by black holes, may make things easier here. Matter falling into a black hole emits huge amounts of energy across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from high-energy gamma rays and X-rays, through visible light, to infrared. However, even such observations pose some difficulties. Because most accretion disks cannot be photographed directly due to the extreme distances between us and their relatively small size. Instead, in their study, Astronomers used spectra of light emitted from inside the disk to characterize its properties. The description and results of the research were published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. At the center of almost every galaxy there are supermassive black holes. However, the authors of the latest research were particularly interested in what was in orbit in close proximity to them. This is the so-called accretion disks in which gas and dust circulate around the hole. It can be said that they feed black holes with portions of energy from the entire electromagnetic spectrum. From high-energy gamma radiation through visible light to radio waves. Studying accretion disks would give us a much better understanding of how black holes work. The problem, however, is that these disks are not even easy to see. The main problems are the distance between us and their small size. Scientists are therefore forced to use various indirect methods to be able to determine their characteristics, e.g. size. To do this, they analyze the spectra of the light coming from them. Recently, an observation was made for the first time using the Gemini North Telescope. This is the Galaxy 3ZW002, where two emission lines in the near-infrared were unexpectedly observed. Emission lines are created when an excited atom descends to a lower energy level, releasing a photon. And since energy levels are unique for each atom, it is like a fingerprint. These lines expand under the influence of the black hole's strong gravitational field and rotation rate and the region they come from is called the broad line region. To determine whether a black hole has an accretion disk, one must find a specific pattern of these broad lines, called a double peak profile. Each time the gas and dust circulating around the black hole moves away from the observer on the one hand and closer to him on the other, which in turn stretches and compresses the emission lines respectively towards longer or shorter wavelengths. This way we get a widened line with two different peaks. Such phenomena are extremely rare. These lines, coming from the inner region of the disk near the supermassive black hole, provide no information about the size of the entire accretion disk. However, Recent near-infrared observations revealed two double-peak profiles in the broadline region that have never been seen before. This was noticed in the Galaxy 3ZW002. And the observation was made using the Gemini Near-Infrared Spectrograph, GNIRS, which allows for simultaneous observations in different bands of light. This made it possible to determine the dimensions of the black hole's accretion disk. Thus, the radius of the inner line was set at 16.77 light days, and the outer one at 18.86 light days, the distance that light travels in one Earth day, measured from the supermassive black hole. By comparison, Voyager 1, the most distant human-made object, is less than one light day away. 
It was also determined that the black hole itself in the galaxy 3ZW002 is 400 to 900 million times heavier than the Sun.